Hello. I am Major Woods. Welcome back to the Regiment's Standard Operating Procedures Video Guide Series. This time we will go over SOP 5, Communications. Remember that as with previous video guides, this video is an abbreviation of the SOP 5 document, so in order to qualify for SOP 5, you still have to attend boot camp sessions. Contact S7 training staff in order to do so. We will cover Quick introduction to TFAR Communications etiquette Setting up radios Do's and don'ts Standard regimental call signs Armor 3 has no complex radio implementation by default the regiment uses the Radio Modification Task Force Arrowhead Radio Beta or TFAR for short. TFAR tunnels all voice communication through TeamSpeak and does not use any vanilla armor voice capabilities. TFAR basically implements four ways of communication. Direct speech, including vehicle intercom while inside certain vehicles, short-range radios and long-range radios. Short-range radios, like the Prick 152 for example, are personal infantry radios. They are lightweight, but their effective range is limited to only a couple of kilometers. Long-range radios are heavy backpacks, but their effective range covers far distances. Remember that the radios need line of sight to work properly, so communications transmission power is affected by terrain and objects. Every loadout comes with a short-range radio. Only special loadouts, like the Radioman, feature long-range radios. Most vehicles have built-in long-range radios. The regiment's team speak forces push to talk, so no use of voice activation is possible. The regiment has three ground rules for all communications. 1. Do not interrupt. Multiple conversations at the same time will clutter up their channel, making transmissions incomprehensible for all participants. Wait until the channel is clear. 2. Use the think-push-talk methodology when communicating. This means that before even pressing the push to talk button, think of what exactly you want to communicate, then push the PDT button, wait a second, then talk. 3. Short and simple. Think of every second of a radio transmission as possible, spam, blocking potentially more important messages. Express yourself as short but comprehensible as possible. In direct speech no radio is used. Only your surroundings can hear you. Though you wouldn't block any radio time, still use direct speech discreetly. Keep the chit-chat to an acceptable minimum. Use direct speech in cases comrades nearby need to hear you. E.g. breaching a building in buddy teams. TFAR has three direct speech voice levels. Whispering. People within one meter radius can hear you. Normal or default. People within a 10 meter radius can hear you. And yelling, where people within a 50 meter radius can hear you. The TFAR voice levels do not really change your microphone level, but merely set how far your voice reaches in game. Low microphone levels will not be fixed by switching to yelling. With TFAR, yeah, I can hear you talk as well as radios with output set to speakers. Always make sure to adjust the voice level accordingly. Never be on yelling unless there is no other way to reach your recipient. If you are in a leading position, make sure to always send out orders via radio to ensure everybody receives the orders. During transportation in certain vehicles the direct speech will automatically become the vehicle's intercom system with a boosted and equalized sound level for better intelligibility over vehicle noise. Stay in the default intercom channel for cargo, passengers. Crew intercom channels are off limits for passengers. All radio transmissions above Fireteam Net must follow the same standardized procedure. Every transmission is structured like this. 
receiver, sender, content, and handover. Make sure to use the correct handover. Over implicates that this participant expects an answer to his transmission. Radio channel is still blocked for the ongoing conversation. Out implicates that this participant does not expect an answer to his transmission. Radio channel is clear for a different conversation. An ongoing radio conversation can be interrupted by a non-participant in cases of higher priority. An example for such a situation would be an imminent threat to friendly forces. It is done by calling out break, break, break on the radio. All participants must clear the radio channel immediately. Only use breaking in urgent high priority situations. Don't break a conversation for information that could wait for another half minute. E.g. spotting a distant contact. In order to use DFAR, you'll need the following key bindings for communications. TeamSpeak push to talk for direct speech. The T button for short range radio push to talk. The Y button for long range radio push to talk. You can check and reassign TFAR push to talk key bindings under the in-game controls menu. Because DFAR direct speech uses the TeamSpeak push to talk to function, make sure that the key binding for TeamSpeak push to talk is not the same as the Armor 3 in-game voice chat button. Best practice is to unassign Armor 3 in-game key binding entirely. This is to avoid any double transmissions which can result in hot mic problems. Left control P opens up the short range radio interface for mission related configuration. The displayed illustration shows the interface functions of short range radios most commonly used by the regiment. In depth functions for the PRIC 152 team radio are in the SOP 5 document. Similarly to the short range radio, Left Alt P opens up the long range radio interface for mission related configuration. The displayed illustration shows the interface functions of long range radios. In depth functions for the radios are in the SOP 5 document. The do's and don'ts. Don't use the radio for unimportant messages. Don't use frequencies, channels which you are not supposed to be on. Orders should always be sent on the radio. Confirm crucial orders or information. Use the correct handover. Over. When awaiting answer. Out. When leaving a conversation. Never end with over and out. It makes no sense. You either request a reply or end the conversation. Wait for your turn to talk. Don't break conversations for uncritical messages. Don't use phrases like repeat last or bravo for Charlie. They can be mistaken for orders for fire missions or numbers. If your immediate commander is dead or missing, get in contact with the next commander in the chain of command. Keep going up the chain, link by link, all the way up to high command if necessary, as long as you make contact and report the situation on the ground. The regiment's Europe platoon call sign is set as Echo. Zeus plays the role of tactical operations center or TOC for immersion purposes and is assigned the call sign Warnock. Actual is a call sign suffix designator for the direct commander of the specified unit. Similarly to the commander designator, Romeo is the designator for a radioman. Irregular call signs for missions will always be stated in the operations order or warning order. Never use more than a three-part designator call sign for practicality. For example, platoon leader's call sign is Echo Actual. Platoon leader's radioman is called Echo Romeo. First squad leader's call sign is Echo 1 Actual. Second squad's radioman's call sign is Echo 2 Romeo. Fire teams and buddy teams use the ST HUD color code system for ease of use. For practicality the fire team buddy team leaders could be referred to by numbers as well on their respective channels.
This has been the standard operating procedure 5 for communications video guide. Next time we'll cover SOP 6, Tactical Combat Casualty Care also known as TCCC or TC3. Thank you for watching.